Hello! Today we're going to start our first official math lesson. It's 2n1.1. So I know that doesn't mean anything to you, but that's pretty important for us teachers and your parents to make sure you're learning everything you need to learn this year. So that standard, that's what the number's called, that says that we're going to learn to read, write, discuss, and represent whole numbers up to a thousand. So we can do that through numerals, which is writing out the number, words, pictures, tally marks, number lines, and manipulatives. Numbers are everywhere. And knowing what they are and what they mean is very important. From keeping score in a game to knowing the outside temperature or how many people are in a group. We use numbers every day. So... Here's some vocabulary that you're going to need to memorize so that when it comes up and we talk about it, you know what, what I mean. Whole numbers. So those are just your numbers. One, two, three, four, five. The numbers that you count with. Not like a half. A half is not a whole number. Numerals. That's what you see when you write out the numbers. That's a numeral. Tally marks. We'll look at tally marks in a little bit. A number line, if you don't know what that is, we'll look at that in a little bit too. Manipulatives can be anything you use to count with. It can be toys or lollipops, anything that you can move around, that's a manipulative. Base 10 blocks, you're going to have to learn how to work with base 10 blocks. And if you've done IXL before, they have you do stuff with base 10 blocks. So you might have worked with them before. And then... The counting number. The counting number is kind of like your whole numbers or your numerals. It's just one, two, three, four, five. What you count with, okay? So, here are some examples of some of those things we talked about. So, the number 43, you write it just like you say it. But you see this little dash in the middle? 40, that little line, 3, that's called a hyphen. So, we write those 40 hyphen 3. We write numbers just the way that you say them. You don't say 40 and 3. Here in the United States, we just say 43. Tally marks, that's these lines right in through here, these red dots here. Or not red dots, I'm sorry, these red sticks that they have. Those are called tally marks. Say tally marks. Hey, okay. so it's just a keep, quick way of keeping track of numbers in groups. So how we do it, again, in the United States, is we make four lines and then when we get to number five we make a slash through it so anytime that you see something that looks like this with the four lines of slash that means five so here we can really quickly see that that's five plus three more and we know that five plus three is eight these are your base ten blocks i'm sure you've worked with them before so each of these little squares equals one and then you know when a rod's put together it's going to equal 10. You don't have to count them every time. You just know a rod put together is 10. And then you put 10 of these rods together. Makes one big flat one. And then that equals 100. So when you see these big flat ones, you just know automatically that's going to be 100. And then if you see them all by themselves, these little singles, that is going to be, you just count them as one. Okay? So we have ones tens and hundreds okay so you see the set of base tens we know that the, these are what 100 so we have how many of them one two so that is 200 we have two hundreds and then these were what do you remember what these were these were tens we have one two three four tens and then how many ones do we have one Two, three, four, five, six. So we have two hundreds, four tens, and six ones. So then we just write that out just like we said it. Two, four, six. So this up here is equal to 246. This is a number line. You've probably worked with one of these before, but you can see 11, 12, 13. It can have any numbers on here, but they'll go in order. Sometimes they might. But this just shows you that 14, if you look at 14, it falls between 13 and 15. 
number lines will help you count and help you add. So if we said 14 plus 2, we'd go 14, 15, 16, because that's 1, 2. And you can use a number line to help you add. You can also use it to help you subtract. If we said 18 minus 2, we'd go backwards, 1, 2. So we know that 18 minus 2 is 16, right? Okay, now what I want you to do is go get a whiteboard. If you don't have a whiteboard, you can use a piece of paper, but a whiteboard will be easy because you can erase stuff. So here, we're going to draw 10 blocks to represent the number 271. So what I want you to do is pause the video. Don't cheat. You need to pause. Pause the video. And on your whiteboard, I want you to draw what you think this would look like in the base 10 blocks. Remember the flat ones, the big squares are 100. The rods, the long rods are tens, and then the singles are your ones, okay? So pause the video. I'm going to show you the answer, but wait until you've gotten the answer yourself so you can check. So pause. Once you've got yours drawn on your whiteboard, unpause the video and check your answer. So yours should look something like this. You should have two big squares, seven skinny rectangles, those are your rods, and then one little square. Is that what you have? Did you get it correct? Let's try the next one. Okay, this next one it uses tally marks. You remember tally marks? Those are the lines. Let me draw a line for you guys. Remember, they're just like this. And if you draw four of them, you make the line sideways, and that represents five. So how would we, using time marks, make the number 23? I'm going to have you do two problems here. Actually, go ahead and start that one. So using tally marks, show the number 23. Pause the video. Do it on your whiteboard, on your paper. And then unpause the video to check your work. Okay, does yours look like this? Remember, you do four marks and then this line across is five. So we have five, 10, 15, 20. And then I have three by themselves to make 23. So you should have one, two, three, four that look like this. And then three by themselves. Is that what you got? If you didn't get this correct, have a parent or an adult or a sister or brother or an auntie or a cousin give you a couple numbers and practice making tally marks. Okay, try your next one. Draw and label a number line starting with 7 and ending at 17. The number 11 falls between which two numbers? So this is, has two different things you have to do. You have to make a number line and you're going to start it with 7 eight, nine, and make it go all the way to 17. And then I want you to tell me what number 11, fall, what two numbers are on either side of the number 11. So pause it and do that now. Start with making a number line. Okay, does yours look similar to this? We start, said to start at seven and end at 17. So I have seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Does yours have all those numbers on it? If it does, it's correct. If it doesn't, see if there's someone in your house that can help you with it. See what you're missing there. So uh, the next question, remember, was the number 11 falls between which two numbers? So we find the number 11 on our line. What two numbers does it fall between? Well, we have 10 and 12. It's between 10 and 12. Is that what you said? Is that what you wrote down? So the next one involves some writing. You might not know how to spell these, but try to get as close as you can, or you can ask someone for help. So the number is 39, and you need to write that in word form. Remember, I told you there's a hyphen in it. So where would the hyphen go in 39? Pause the video. 
and write that on your whiteboard. And then unpause the video to check your answer. 39 written in word form looks like this. And the hyphen is in between the 30 and the 9. You put the hyphen where those numbers would be, in between where those numbers are. Is that how you wrote yours? The next one, write the number 521. So what would 521, sorry, 521 look like if you wrote that down? Pause the video, write it on your whiteboard or piece of paper, and then come check your answer by unpausing the video. 521 would look like this, 5, 2, 1. Is that how you wrote yours? Okay, we're going to do a few more together before you start practicing all by yourself. So what number is represented by the base 10 blocks below? So what number are these base 10 blocks here showing? How many flat ones do you have? How many rods do you have? And how many singles do you have? Write down the number on your whiteboard. Pause the video, and then once you have your number written down, unpause it to come back and check your answer. Okay, what did you put for your answer? There are two flat ones, so I'm going to write two. There are three rods, so I'm going to write three. And then there are five singles over here by themselves, so I'll write the number five. So this number is 235. Is that what you wrote down? Remember, you just need to count what you have here. So you count all the flat ones. You write that number down. You count the rods. You write that number down. And then you count the singles. And you write that number down. This is a really big one. How would you write this? Count how many flat ones there are. Write the number down. Count how many rods there are, and if there's no rods, you got to put zero, and then you count the ones, and if there's no ones, you got to put zero. So think about that when you write this number down. Pause the video. Remember, you go flat, write that down, rods, write that down, and singles, write that down. So think about that and put it on your whiteboard. Unpause the video to reveal the answer. Okay, what did you get for an answer? Let's count these. One two, three, four of those hundreds blocks. So we got to write four. Are there any rods? There's no rods. So we have to say zero because we always have to count rods. If there's no rods, we got to put zero. And then ones, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to write the number eight. So you should have written down 408. Is that what you wrote down? That's the correct answer, 408, 408. Hey, only three more left to do with me. You're going to use tally marks to show the number 17. Remember, you make one, two, three, four, and then diagonal to make your fifth one. So how many of those will make the number 17? Practice on your whiteboard, pause the video and then come back and check your answer. No cheating, pause the video and do it on your, on your end first. Okay, so I made five for the number 17. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, and then do a diagonal, because that's five. Five plus five is 10, but that's still not 17. So if I draw another five, four, and five, that's five, 10, 15. We're still on to 17. Two more will make 17. Is that what you got? Did you get three that look like this and then two singles? Five, 10, 15, plus one, plus one makes 17. Okay, now here's a really big one. The next one, you're gonna have to write the number 300 in word form. That one's going to be really hard. See if you can do it. It's okay if you get it wrong. We're just practicing here. So write 304 in word form. Pause the video and see what you get.
Okay, so this one's a little tricky because there's no hyphens. Like when we say 72, you see that right here? 72. But when we write 304, we write 3. Sorry, my thing is not working. We're going to put a text box in here. We write 304, just like we say it. We just write these numbers into words. So 304. See, there's nothing in the tens place. So we don't have to write anything there. 304. And when you get after 99, you don't put hyphens in them anymore. I know it's weird world, huh, for English. How about the next one? Next one should be easy. Write the number 472. How would you write 472? Pause the video and work it out yourself. And then unpause the video to check your answer. Okay, so we would go 472. We take the four, seven, two. We just write out the numbers it says. And if it doesn't say a number, we put a zero in it, like up here. And then we did the 304. It was zero, so we didn't have to say anything before the four. So four, seven, two. Is that what you got? Okay, and then next you're going to be doing all by yourself. If you don't, if you forget how to do something, you can always watch this video again. Okay? Okay, that's the end of this lesson, but there will be two links, one for a math song that will be fun to learn and dance to, and another lesson recapping everything that we did here. So if you struggled with any of it, if you had a little bit of problem, you can click on that link and it will take you to another math lesson to go over everything we just talked about. Hey, good luck. I know you're going to do great.